Hi, this is Frederick from Detroit, Berlin. I'm going to build some audio cables, some balanced audiophile grade cables. I'm putting together a mastering chain. After a song is mixed, it gets mastered and that means that it will be streaming services, CD, vinyl ready. That's the job of a mastering engineer. I'm putting together an analog mastering chain, so therefore I need cables that are of high quality and cables that are of the right length, as short as possible for a good noise to audio ratio. So, what do we need to build cables? We need Nutric connectors. These are, in my opinion, the best. You need wiring, the cable itself. You need a soldering iron. You need some something that can cut. Stanley knife. You might need a lighter. Some shrink tubes, of course solder itself. You might want to use some flux or like the Germans like to call it Lötönig and a multimeter to check if the wires are connected the right way. It's always to double check before connecting stuff. I think that's about it. I mentioned balanced cables. That means that there are also unbalanced cables. Think of an RCA cable. That's just one signal going through the cable and a balanced cable, it is actually two wires moving the signal, but the signal is face inverted on the second wire so that if you got a sound wave, it goes like this and that is good to reduce the noise influence on the cable when you have like long runs of cable. Let's go over some types of connector. You got the RCA connector, you got the ground and you got the signal. On the other end of this cable is a jack, a quarter inch jack, and it has a tip and a sleeve. That means this is an unbalanced cable. Then you got quarter inch jack. This one has a tip, a ring and a sleeve. So it has one signal more. This is a balanced cable. It can move a stereo signal or it can move a balanced signal which is like I explained the same signal but opposite face so the noise gets cancelled. And then XLR cables and they also have three connectors. They're mostly used for professional audio. These are really strong and today I'm going to make myself a few of these. You always got a male and a female. What you really need to look out for is how these cables are connected. The middle pin is always the same wire, but the outer pins, the first and the third pin, they're actually differently wired if you hold them next to each other because of course when you connect them they need to make the same connection. Might sound complicated, but it's not complicated. I will show like this little picture here that notes what pin is what pin and how it should be connected. You got the three wires and two wires are these signal wires and the third one, the ground and the ground is wrapped around two cables to get like a shielding. When you cut the wire to prepare it for assembly and for soldering, then you take the wiring, you make a third wire of it. You might want to put like this shrink tube on it so that it doesn't connect with anything else. And then you solder it to the connector. What I always like to do is like have a cable that is correctly wired, have it right beside me that I can always take a second look to check if I'm doing it correctly. Let's start building. So here I got two ends of the cable that I am going to assemble. The way I'm going to connect the cable is that the signal flows through the cable 
following the text. I think that's a good practice. Let's first look for the right connector. So we got the Nutric connector. This is the male three pole connector. And then let's find a female one. You're going to be very conservative. Going to put a female with the male. Everyone that's against that can leave now. <laughs> I'm just joking. There are not too many devices that work well if you connect a male with a male and a female with a female. It's just the type of connector. And it's probably called male because it has these sticky things like this pin. But yeah, nowadays females also sometimes have these sticky things. So yeah, let's go with the time. And not be offended too much. Maybe that's also a good practice. But here we go. We've got all these pieces. We got the rear piece, we got the pins where you solder the th stuff to, we got the thing that goes over the other thing to keep everything in place, and then we got this thing to keep the wire in the other things. Okay, so best practice, female goes at, I would say, at the beginning of the cable, if you take note of how the text is going. The text is going that way, so female piece goes here. And the male piece will go on the other side, like this. And if you forget this and you soldered your connector, then you can desolder your connector and start again, because you will never get it over there with the connectors on it. So let's first strip the male about two centimeters. I will make kind of a cut very carefully not to cut the sleeve. I will be twisting. Let's do the twist and twist these cables. Seems okay. After we twisted the ground, we take a little piece of shrink tube, put it on there, take a lighter, let's make it warm, make it shrink. Who doesn't like the smell of burning plastic? Super healthy. Then we remove some of the plastic of the other wires. Twist them. One side like that. I actually wanted to do something different. These rings are black, but they also sell rings in red and with these red rings it is easier to see if it is the right or the left cable because balanced cables you can send a balanced mono signal to it and then you need a left and right cable so this will be the right cable because red is always right and black or white or blue, it doesn't really matter, but that's always left. I think that's kind of an unwritten rule. It doesn't matter technically, but it's a little bit of an unwritten rule to have the red connector on the right side. Makes life easier. Let's do the twist again. Here we go. And a good soldering iron is worth a lot. Doesn't need to be a fancy one. It's such a pleasure.
Okay. Sometimes little pieces of solder just jump up. They're pretty hot. Don't put fancy stuff near. Let's shorten these cables a little bit. So here we have the female one. I'm going to double check. Like this. I will position that other one in a minute because I figure it will probably be hot. Okay. This is one. I hope this is good. We'll test it in a bit. This needs to go there. You might notice that I'm not using flux. The solder has a little bit of flux in it. And this is pretty warm. This is one side. You can twist it pretty hard normally. That's not a problem because this piece keeps that piece from twisting and keeps the wire secure. So you can twist it and it will tighten itself and then you can pull the cable just a bit and it will not have an impact on the connection. It should be like that. Before it's put together, it's not that strong, but if you put it together it will become pretty strong. So these cables, they've got the gold-plated Nutric connectors on them. The cables themselves, they're summer cables, good quality, it's very flexible and it's shielded well. Let's first see if everything connects well. This is okay. That is also okay. I'm going to test this one again. It is okay. Let's take the cable I already made. It's this one. Let's do the ultimate test. Let's connect these two and see if they all... Yes. Yes. And... Perfect. They work. I will test them out tomorrow if they sound good. I suppose they will sound good because high quality cables, they're made correctly. I think third to half of the price of a set of cables in the store. I will link these cables, these connectors in the description down below. If you follow that link, it's an affiliate link, then if you buy something the channel gets 
a small percentage and it doesn't cost you any more than it would otherwise cost you so that would be very nice if you would yeah click those links even if you buy something else the channel gets a little percentage and yeah that keeps the channel going i would really like to thank you for watching hope you also find your way in doing these diy cables the benefits are it is cheaper it is fun maybe it's not so it could be a pro or a con but the cable length you choose it yourself you measure the ideal cable length and the cables have the right length that's a big plus especially if you need special length cables like for the mastering i'm doing i need shorter cables that's also a pro and if you buy a cable you don't know what's inside if you buy these cables you exactly know if you can't solder you can learn to solder it's not that difficult use the right size of tip with the right soldering if you need to solder bigger pieces of metal you need a bigger tip if you solder really fine wires you need a smaller tip otherwise it will heat up too quickly and you might burn plastic or if you're doing like these PCBs and stuff you might damage components and stuff so right size tip right amount of temperature on your soldering iron don't inhale the fumes a ventilator is best to suck the fumes away and yeah i would like to thank you so much for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already give this video a like leave in the comment section down below what your favorite cables are if you enjoyed this episode or just say hello hope to see you next time bye bye